Yo, what's up boys? Welcome back to the Behind the IGL series I'm doing on this channel. And today we're going to cover how to play and keep high ground late game from half half all the way to the end of the last circle. To show this, I'm going to vote of you back to back wins we got and the latest trio cash cup. We played so insane for the first hour, but then unfortunately played really bad after, but we still finished 23rd. Also, if you want to support me, you can use code VUJ in the item shop. If you want to follow back on Twitter, you can tweet a video proof of you using it and then tag me in the video and the tweet, and then I will follow you back. Anyways, that's enough talking, let's get into the video. Enjoy. Okay, so here we are in half half in the first game, and you notice we do pull first moving. And then as soon as we pull, my teammates, or especially Josh, he usually plays ultimate height. He instantly goes up like a lot of layers, so we can set it up for later. I'll show you later what he does. And then I'm instantly looking like at our biggest threat for height, which could be opposite height, because they're in the mindset to play height right now, so they might pattern us. But since we're all free looking at him, and we're all pretty high up, and there's not much like space to land, they are all, like a lot less likely to land on us. And now we know for first moving, our biggest priority is to make sure no one pads and lands on us. So you notice like none of us really go for beams. We're just trying to be like as aware as possible about everyone who's padding and like shooting them to pressure them off, etc. And then you notice now that everybody from dead side is padded over, I'm going to start tapping forward a bit. And now as zone's about to start catching up, we have to start being aware of all these people that are padding. And this is ex exactly what happens. Or well, Josh here, he should be staying up here, but he made a mistake and he wasn't. But it's all good though, because he fights them, distracts them, while I here at front top, I get ahead. You'll see me heal. And then I'll get ahead, I'll build up and go more front side and then look back and pressure them. Or the people that were going to build fight for height. They've got pressure from Josh and Arrest, my teammates. And they've got pressure from Zone on their back. And they've got pressure from me front side, shooting them. And they've got pressure from being so high up. And they just have to be forced to give it up like they did. This isn't like the best example. Because they kind of instantly folded after Josh and stuff just fought them. And Josh wasn't like initially on ultimate height. Like we should be doing. But it still should make sense. I know second height's below me, so I know I can do a pretty cheap tarp over them and just connect. This is almost like perfectly how high you want to be. Two layers above, so you know second height just can't edit out and then crank up to height. And we should be should be triple spraying second height in case they want to take height. But we notice they're not like the greatest players, so it doesn't matter too much, but we should be. Like we can tell that they're not really looking for height. You see Josh go instantly up when the next zone pops because that's the time where everyone's going to start padding as soon as the next zone pops. So that's when Josh goes up instantly to play second height for a bit so that can counter the padders. And then I think around here we notice like my mats are good but Josh's mats are 24, the rest are 28 mats. So I think we come to play the same layer top so we can save mats because we don't have enough to play ulti height. And first moving. First first moving and the start of second moving are the most important times to play LT height. And here is another thing I want to talk about. Instead of making like a two layer top, like where you do a cone and a floor, you do two wide cone because it gives you a lot more area to like work with and it's still the same material cost as a two layer top. And it looks more like threatening to people below you and it's harder to crank up on. And I think here, it's a thing that I didn't, like I subconsciously think of, is when there's trees, you want to play pretty high above them, because what people can do with trees is like easily use them to like crank up behind, like because they block a line of sight. Like say you were like, I was height in the tree here, people could like crank up from the side and get height without me noticing. And it also means people are going to find it hard to chop height, like when you're here you can't even see height. So we can play really high up without any worries. So I see second zone and then you'll see me look towards it and I'll look what stuff is in zone that is going to be in like the safe zone eventually. That's the highest point that people could pad on to get height. 
and then I go, I come, and we go up there as a whole trio or a duo in this case, so no one can pad up onto us. And you have to do this as a trio, because if they notice one person is up there, and there's two or like another person of your trio down, they, they can make a play to triple pad up there, so you have to all be up there as a trio. And now all we have to do here is play on the same layer like I just said and just double spray or triple spray down until the end. Because if you do this perfectly and just double spray pressure second height, the low mats you have don't even matter. Because no one's going to crank up on you. And then I get to set up heal off just to guarantee the win. You could just drop but I always play heal off and let fraggers go down just so I can secure the win in case. And then we do win, but something I want to talk about is you notice how I have almost no kills, but I still stick to my role as an IGL and just secure the win. It's a good thing a good player should do is stick to their role and play how they normally play no matter how many kills they have. Because sometimes what happens with bad players, they'll get like hardly any kills compared to their teammates and then they'll start playing aggressive and then die because of that. Okay, so here we are in half half, and we're playing height to one side of half half, right? And now, as soon as we pull it, we go front side as quick as we can, and then go up layers. And now, just like last game for first moving, we're j only going to be focusing to not get landed on by padders. And we know that congested side is over here, and they've all pulled a max zone, so nearly all of them are going to pad onto us, which is dead side. So there's going to be a lot of padders, and we have to be super aware, and don't go for any beams, just be super aware of people landing on us. That's the only thing we have to do here. And they see, like, no one, none of us are going for beams, we're all just looking in the air, jumping around, having a 360 view. And not going for any beams or anything, because we just don't want to get landed on, we don't care about getting kills right now we just don't want to get height taken of us and now i know above these trees i can do a cheap tarp because they kind of act like a catch to us if we fall and it's hard for people to shoot us out through it and now i want to show you something just like i said last game when i'm looking at where moving zones go i'm marking and looking at the highest points that are going to be like uncovered by zone and in this zone i saw that the spire was in zone so i was getting ready to pad over to it if zone goes that way just so nobody else like pads onto it and takes height off of us so you know you notice here i'm not even like tarping to front side because i know if it pulls that way i'm just padding onto spire so i can save mats and here i actually pad like before it goes i don't think i needed to but it wouldn't really have mattered because if it didn't pull that way i could have just padded back but i just padded here now in case someone somehow does it earlier than us and it does pull right over it, so I calm everyone to pad over. And then we start. I go up layers, because I know people could land on the spire below us. So we go up a couple layers and then keep going. And then we notice this team. This is something that you have to learn. You have to learn, like, how people play. And, like, by what they're playing, what their future plans are going to be, right? Because no good team plays, like, this close to height and think they're gonna play low when zone literally goes down here and it's so free to just drop down here and play low this behavior here means they're definitely playing to take height later on this is like a place that a lot of people and a lot of good teams go by is just playing second height and then taking it later like this so we definitely knew by the by these people's behavior that they're gonna be looking for height and we also know we saw this guy's skin this guy here, he's a good player, and we saw his skin, and we saw them in the kill feed, so we knew he was a good player, and we knew they were going to want to take height by their behavior, so we just started spraying them, triple spraying them the entire end game, because we all had 400 plus ammo as well, and that just completely griefed them, and they did, didn't want to go for height later on. We just keep griefing them, and never stop spraying them until they drop. And then we notice they drop, so that's almost our job done. But we're still keeping an eye on that team, because we know it's a good team. So we still want to grief him out the lobby. And we still have a lot of AR. So we keep a track of their skins, and we just keep griefing them when we know where they are. 
and then all we have to do here, it's pretty simple, there's no second height to pressure. So we just keep griefing that good team so we can win the game. And then from here on it's just really simple. We just hard just triple spraying down. Because even if you're spraying, you're not killing them, you're pressuring them and you're making all of the people fight because you're breaking builds, etc. So you close the game out. And then you watch here, just like last game as an IGL, I'm just playing the heal off, even though I don't have many kills. I'll just keep playing the heal off, make sure you win the game. And now I win, and I still have four floppers for the heal off, I don't even use one. The like, simple things that you need to remember from this video, uh, in first and second moving, don't even go for beams on people that are padding, you just need to be aware as possible and like 360 around keep jumping around being as aware as possible where every pattern is and making sure they don't land on you and uh, to triple spray teams and grief them on second height when you can tell by their behavior that they're gonna play for height especially if you know they're a good team and to play your role as an IGL and finish out the game just healing off and not getting greedy because they don't have kills